Hello everyone and welcome to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to look at your question 3 of the final papers. On the left here I have the final of 2018 open, question 3, and we are going to start with a class. What is important is to read these questions properly. So let's start with the constructor. This is usually the first method that you have to create and I suggest that you create only one method at a time and complete it before you move on to the next question. If I read this question in 3.1 you will see that the word receive appears in there. So receive means this is now my parameters that I need to create for this method. So this constructor has a method has the parameter name of the restaurant this is the first parameter. The next one is the year that the restaurant opened. And the last one is the number of employees. So we would think that the name of the restaurant is string. And the year is possibly an integer. And the number of employees would be an integer. But instead of guessing, rather look at the given fields or attributes of the class. So if we look at what was given, here at the top you will find what is called the fields or the attributes and the name yes was a string but the year opened was also a string. So therefore when we are creating these parameters for our constructor we are also going to create a parameter of string data type for the year to match these attributes. And then the number of employees it's receiving um, is an integer number, so that would be our parameter that I call pnum. Once I've created the signature of this constructor create, that would be this line here, I then push Control Shift C, and that creates for me the skeleton code for this method. So what is important in the constructor create is that our fields or our attributes, they're one and the same thing, will be on the left of the assignment statement. You can remember this because F stands for first. If you swap them around, your program will have no output. So here, my parameters on the right is giving my fields on the left values. So there I have p name, p year, and p num, giving these fields values. So that is what the question asks. Then further assign these values to the respective attributes. The next question says write code for the method get num employees that will return the number of employees. Now, first of all, I need to decide, is this going to be a procedure or a function? The word return or result always indicates that this method is a function. And we are going to name it the same as the paper is asking us to do. There is no parameters because I don't see the word receive in this Question. Receive would indicate the parameters. No receive means no parameters. So I'm creating the function called get number of employees and the data type is going to be an integer. Get functions are called accessor methods and they will return one of my fields to the, my main form because these fields here are what is called encapsulated because they declared under private, they can only be accessed by this class. Accessor methods are then also always public, so that my main form can call them. Once I've declared this signature, we declare one signature at a time, and then we complete that method. So I declare the function. Functions always need a data type at the end. And then I push Control shift c and I will complete the code for get num employees. Every function has a result, and this function's result is if num employees, my field or attribute, 
to give my main form access. Remember, your function needs a result. Now let's look at the next question. It says write code for a method called increase num employees. Now first I need to decide whether this is a function or a procedure. If I read this question, I don't see the word result or return. So therefore, this method is definitely a, fun a procedure. Um, I also see that it says it receives a value. It tells me that it's an integer value. So therefore, it has one parameter. And this parameter holds the number of employees that we need to increase our field if num employees with. So if I look at the code here, I'm going to create a procedure. The procedure is increase num employees and the parameter pnum is an integer. We don't have a data type at the end of procedures because they don't have a result. Then I will push Control shift c and I will increase the number of employees by the parameter that I received. This is called a mutator method, making changes to an existing field of my class. So let's have a look at the next question. This question says write code for a method called compile code. First, I need to decide functional procedure. I immediately see the word return appears in the question. So therefore, it's a function. Now I need to decide whether it has parameters. The word there, receives, indicate that I'm receiving a parameter. What am I receiving? The full name of the owner. So therefore, it's only one parameter. So here is my signature for compile code. It's a function. It receives a name, the name will be a string data type, and I know that it is returning a string because if I look at the question here, it says it returns an identification code. And here at the bottom, they've given me an example of the identification code, which consists of letters from the alphabet as well as numbers. So therefore, it will be a string function. They explain here that the percentage sign indicates the letter of the name of the restaurant and then the last two letters of the full name of the owner and then the year. I am receiving the owner as a parameter, but in my constructor I've already given the field for the restaurant and value and also the year that the restaurant opened was also given a value in my constructor. So therefore I can use these fields in this function. So here, let's have a look at the function compile code and here it is. It's a function so it needs to return a result. It said the first name, the first character of the restaurant name which is stored in if name, one of my attributes. Then the last two characters of the person's name. Now I don't know how long this person's name is so I'm using the length function in here and I'm minus one so that I can start at the second last character and I am copying for two characters. Remember copy is I'm copying from this string. Where do I want to start? I want to start at the second last character and I want to copy out two characters. This last argument in my copy function is not up to where you're copying but for how many characters you want to copy and then lastly I add if year open that received a value in my constructor create. So we're now done with the questions for the class but what is important is just to see what has been given and there was a string given sometimes you have to write the to string yourself and sometimes it is done for you and sometimes it's done with errors and you have to fix it. But in this case it was done for you. When you are done with your class I suggest that you now run your program. You will have no output but at least you can sort out any syntax errors that you have. 
So this is now question 3.1 done. And in our next tutorial, we will have a look at the main form and how we will call all of these methods. Hope to see you soon.